Hi everyone, Grant Kay here from the Smoke Learning Channel. The Action 3D Compositor is a very powerful compositing tool, but sometimes it's useful to get different kinds of render passes out of action for various finishing tasks. This includes beauty passes, matte passes, Z-depth passes, ambient occlusion passes, and much, much more. All of this can be set up using the Action Render Outputs. In Action, we have a 3D composite using a combination of flat surfaces, 3D text, and lighting with shadows. We'd now like to render this out for further processing. To control what Action renders is managed through the Output menu. Inside the Output menu, we can have any number of render passes, the type of render pass, and what is included in a render pass. To start, we have an output list and the default output is the main composite. Using the buttons underneath the list, we can create, duplicate, delete and rename passes. In this instance, the composite pass is actually the beauty pass. So let's rename the render pass to beauty. To create another render pass, we just click the Add button. This render pass will become the alpha for the 3D text and we can rename it accordingly. Making sure the result view is selected, we can flick in between render pass results. So right now, the text alpha output has nothing assigned to it. The first thing we will do is set the output type. In the blue pop-up menu, we can change the option from Comp to Matte. This means only the alpha will be outputted to this render pass. The next step is to choose which object's alphas will be included in the render pass. To do this, we will look at the object list which is currently empty, hence the black frame. In the cursor pop-up menu, we can change the mode from Move to edit output. The edit output function only works with the object list and the output menu. In the schematic view, we can see that the nodes are grayed out as they are not included in this current render output. Click on the nodes that will create the 3D text and this will activate them. They will now appear in the result view and in the object list. Now scrubbing through the time bar, the final composite has the text revealing itself from behind the first set of trees. We don't see this currently in the matte output. Clicking on the front tree nodes, we can add that to the matte render output as well. So the text is revealing itself from behind the trees, but in its current state, the trees would also be affected by any process because it is white in the matte and not black. To rectify this, we select the front trees node in the object list and change its visibility from visible to occlude only. Scrubbing the time bar again shows that the mats are combined together to give us the correct mat for the text which is now composited in the scene. You could also have separate render passes for other layers as well. So let's create one for the Cities layer. We'll click Add in the Output list and we'll rename the output to City. Change the output type from Comp to Matte. In the schematic, using the Edit Output, we will add the City nodes and the Mid Tree nodes into the object list. Once more, we'll select the Mid Trees in the object list and set the visibility type to occlude only. With the result view selected, you can click through the render outputs in the output list or press F4 on the keyboard repeatedly to cycle through the outputs. There are a few other types of outputs you can render in action. For instance, if we add a new output and we rename this output to shadow, we can create a shadow pass for tweaking. So we'll change the output type from comp to shadow 
and this time we will add all the objects into the object list by pressing the All Objects button. Scrubbing the time bar, we can see that we have the shadow for the text being created by the light in the composite. Just so that you know, the other layers have had their shadow casting abilities turned off for the result of the composite, but if they were on, their shadows would also be visible in the shadow render pass. Finally, the last render output that we will create will be a Z-depth pass. This pass will allow you to create depth of field effects after you have processed the 3D composite out of action. For instance, we will select the shadow pass in the output list and press copy to make a duplicate. We did this because we want to use everything that was in the shadow pass. We will select the newly created pass and rename this to Z-depth. The reason for duplicating a pass is that we can use everything that has already been set up in the output and all we have to do is change the output type. So we will change the type from Shadow to Z-Depth. Scrubbing the time bar, the Z-Depth of the 3D composite doesn't look that bright. To fix this, switch to the Object menu and select the Camera tab. Under the camera column, we can adjust the far clipping plane. By reducing it to a much lower value, the Z-depth output will become much brighter and mapped correctly for the depth of field effect. A last bit of information. You can disable and enable render outputs that you would like to render in the output list. You would do this whenever you need to reprocess for whatever reason. Finally, remember to always go to frame 1 and press the process button. Smoke will begin to render the various passes all at the same time. Once the render is complete, if we exit back to the Smoke desktop, we will find that we have a clip per render pass that we can take on to the next process for our desired effect. If you want to know any more information about Autodesk Smoke or you'd like to download the free 30-day trial copy, just go to autodesk.com forward slash smoke for Mac.